All right, so in this video, I just want to show how to clean a piece of equipment or a vehicle without using a pressure washer. So if you're unable to go to a car wash to clean off a vehicle, you should probably follow this method. You shouldn't buy a power washer and then try to clean it at your house because your driveway is going to become filthy and full of grease. And that's not good for anybody. So what we have here is a drip pan, a couple of scrapers, a vacuum brake bleeder just for sucking up the leftover fluid, a little uh, manual pump, some brake cleaner. You can buy the brake cleaner in boxes of 12 and you can get it for under $2 a, a can if you do that. And then uh, you have a, a brush, you can find that in the cement department, and a uh, some paint thinner, Varsol, Varsol being the trademark name of paint thinner in Canada from Esso. So with these things here, you can get the vehicle cleaned off. So in this case, we're working on a forklift. So I can't clean it in the garage. I got a bunch of stuff in here. I'm working on a car there, sort of more in storage than anything. But anyway, I don't want to make a giant mess here inside. I'm not gonna make a mess outside. So I was able to clean this, uh, what you'd kind of call a wheel well, off with this uh, process, just scraping it off so you kind of scrape it off, then you're going to spray it with a hand sprayer, then scrub it as best you can, then spray it some more, and then a brake cleaner at the end just to kind of dry things off, and you got the drip tray so it's not all piled up on the floor. And the brake cleaner also is good for removing stains from cement, so you can use it for that. So we're going to follow that process over on this side, I don't have the lighting set up yet, but I need to clean out this wheel well here and eventually clean off the engine, the transmission and everything. Like it's just, this machine is filthy. It hasn't been cleaned in like 40 years, 30 years. I guess the machine is 30 years old, so it hasn't really been cleaned off. So ultimately, I would have preferred to have the tow truck take this to a car wash and clean it off or have the seller clean it off. I tried to do both things and it didn't work out. But that your best bet is to take it to a car wash. Not that they have like the best power washing equipment. The best equipment would be like a heated power washer that you would find uh, at like an industrial repair shop. But if you're gonna bring this to a repair shop by tow truck, it's gonna cost you a hundred bucks each way for to carry the thing. And then you're probably going to pay $100 an hour to pay a laborer to power wash your machine. So what I'm doing here I can do for under $100 and it's good enough that I could wire brush this thing off and paint it after the fact. So we'll get into that here in a minute. Alright, so as you can see here, this side of the machine is pretty messy. So this is uh, a garden sprayer of some sort. It says not to put solvent in it. Obviously, you got to realize that by putting solvent in this, you're making a big flamethrower. So keep that in mind. So I have like an LED light here. You wouldn't want to use a halogen light or have any open sources of flame or anything around. You can get two different styles of this. One has a metal tip and this one has a plastic tip. And the metal tip one is like 25 bucks Canadian and the plastic one is 10 bucks Canadian, so I thought might as well just buy the cheap $10 one and if there's a problem you can buy two and a half of these before you can buy one of the other ones. So when you got this turned in it kind of mists. So I've already done the scraping although I could have scraped off a little bit more right here. It's preferred if you can just scrape it off and then suck it up in a vacuum rather than trying to dissolve it. So one of the jobs I need to do on this machine is to basically overhaul all the cylinders. But as you can see, it drips off fairly well just by doing this. Then if you were to open up the uh, tip, you can get more of like a cleaning action, right? You get more pressure behind you. 
and you just have to pump it up a bit more. So you can go a long way with a bit of paint thinner compared to brake clean. This is a bit smellier, but at least uh, it's cheaper. And it, it's not as bad as using like a full compressed air wand like I've used in the past because that like makes a big cloud of solvent where this isn't too bad. I'm going to turn the fan off after we're done filming, or turn the fan on rather. You're going to see that we're catching everything in the drip pan as opposed to making some giant mess. And then uh, I need to do the whole drivetrain. If we can see that, but it's pretty gross in there. But if you want to speed up the uh, evaporation of the solvent, you can just hit it with some brake clean to finish it off. And obviously you can just give it a, a scrub with a brush. If the camera wasn't in the way, I could do a, a bit better job. There's all kinds of different brushes you can get in the car detailing section. That's just what I had kicking around. So I guess just to wrap it up, all you do is scrape it off, then soften it up with this, and then scrub it down and then you can blast it off with a more high pressure stream and then I've got that vacuum uh, brake bleeder for sucking the fluid out of this but basically if you can get this outside and into the sun you can get the uh, solvent to evaporate so that's not a, a bad solution just to do that so hopefully you found that informative thank you for watching